Today we are setting up our initial tune file for the Terminator X on the 598 big block, so stick around. What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the garage and we are diving back into the Holly Terminator X platform and today we will be going through kind of setting up the software side of the Terminator X. Now you've got two options whenever you go out there and buy a Terminator X, you go to the, the website, whatever, uh, you, you know, wherever you're buying it and if you go into say the kits, whenever you open up, you've got it with the handheld or without the handheld and I never get it with the handheld. The three and a half inch screen doesn't really serve a purpose for me. You don't have access to a lot of the features that are available through the software. And so I just go with the one that comes with the USB cable from the get-go. You save a little money and you get a more feature-rich uh, option that way. But keep that in mind that uh, by doing so, there's a quick way of setting up a tune file just like you would use the wizard on the handheld. And we're going to touch on that today. And so to grab the tune file, you go over to support and underneath EFI software, Look for the Terminator version 2 software. This are the most recent version if this is uh, you're watching this video later on. And we're going to go ahead and open that up. And there will be a window that pops up initially. But what we want to do is we want to come into File or through that window that pops up and do Open Global File. And what we have here is something called Base Cows. Whenever you click on this, it's going to pop up and say, hey, be aware that this is just kind of a guideline. This isn't, uh, you know, this was built for a specific engine to get you in the ballpark. We can hit OK. We'll go into GEM since that's our platform in big block and we're looking for the dual sync NA. You can see I already did this. I actually recorded a whole video with my microphone off, so I have to do this one over. But we're looking for the dual sync because that's what we're using. If you're using points output, you would go with HEI, but we'll open this up and now we've got a base file to start with. I'm gonna go ahead and save this. I wanna save this as a new file name on here and since we've got this first start, I'll go ahead and overwrite that one. And now we've got a different file outside of that base cal that we uh, use to open this up. The first thing, first, system. This is where we're always gonna start whenever setting one of these up. And we're gonna shoot through this pretty quick. So I apologize, I wanna get all of this information in in a very short video. There's a lot of these tables that you're gonna see over here that I'm not gonna talk about. I'm gonna skip over them. One of two reasons, we're not using them in this setup, or two, the values that are in there are perfectly fine for initial first start. We'll touch on some of these later on as we need to dial them in for specific uh, reasons, things like that. For now, we're just focusing on what you need to do to get a first style, uh, first start tune configuration to load into your Terminator X. So let's go to our ECU configuration. Make sure your proper ECU is selected between the X and the X Max. We're just running the X on this setup. And then we go into engine parameters. This is the big one right here. We need to do our displacement. All of the fuel calculation stuff is based off of engine displacement. We're running a 598. It needs to know that so volumetric efficiency will work properly. And we're using VE on this app. You've got a lot of different uh, things. Speed density, don't get it confused. We have speed density. We have volumetric efficiency. They are two separate things in this case. We use the terms kind of interchangeably on the factory ECU uh, platforms, uh, but speed density is more of a fuel delivery calculation, whereas VE is a uh, air mass calculation. So we're going to stick with VE on this one. And then uh, we'll go down, look at our EFI system. We're running multi-port, uh, our actual system pressure. I know it's running about 58 PSI at the regulator right now. And then we're going to choose our injectors. And in this case, we're running an 80 pounds, basically a Siemens DECA. So we'll select that and it populates all of our data. If you need be, you can do custom and set in flow versus voltage and stuff like that. But I like to choose something that's close to what I've got and we can correct it on the fuel side of it. Next, we'll go into ignition parameters. Verify that we've got our dual sync set up and our ignition angle reference angle is proper for how we set up the dual sync. We put the crank to 50 degrees before top dead center and get our crank signal uh, dialed in on the dual sync by adjusting it. And then later on, we have to check the timing with the timing light. Uh, another thing, we can check our firing order, standard uh, Chevy firing order. If we needed to for a 7-2 swap cam, we could just drop that down but we'll leave it as is there. And we're not running knock sensors right now, so we're not worried about setting this up. I'll touch on this later. We're gonna install one wire knock sensors on the big block eventually, and I'll show you how to get these set up so they're working properly. 
Rest of this, we're pretty much good until we get down to closed loop learn. We want to make sure that we've got closed loop enabled and that we have some correction in here. We'll start with the 50 plus, 50 minus. That's perfectly fine. Later on, we might add some stuff like minimum coolant temp to keep out of closed loop during startup. And then learn, we want to have base fuel learn enabled. Same ordeal. We've got 50% plus or minus. And then we have 100% apply is basically what the gain is. And so we'll leave that for now because we want this thing to fall in line as soon as possible on our target AFR since we're doing a first start. Same ordeal. Later on, we may have to do an able TPS learn because at idle, especially with an aggressive cam, uh, the learn can start generating bad data. And so we might want to put like 2% in there. Other than that, Obviously, we're not doing variable cam, individual cylinder. We're not doing anything with that right now. That's something we'll talk about later on, and we don't need to worry about inputs and outputs. We're not using AC kick or electric fans, but we can leave those as is for now and just ignore them. But let's move on. We'll go over to the fuel side real quick, and here is our base volumetric efficiency graph. As I said, this is a calculation of displacement. So where we have 100% right here, that is saying that we are moving 100% of the displacement of the uh, motor. So in this case, 598 cubic inches, you know, what, 9.8 liters of air is moving at this point. Cool thing is we can convert this over to fuel flow and see exactly how much. That's 259 pounds per hour in total. Divide that by eight to get individual cylinders. So if you were to look right there where we're about 407, with 80 pound per hour injectors, this is uh, you know, going to be close to 50% duty cycle or so. Gives us a nice thing to look at, but we'll be focusing on volumetric efficiency. We've got our fuel graph, just a 3D representation of how the graph looks, and then our learn table. This is the big one. This is where the changes populate as the system learns it. Now, this is applied to our base fuel, but until we click transfer learning to base, this is a separate table. That way we can uh, work with the data. If we know we've got some bad cells down here, we can get rid of those uh, cells before we transfer it over to the base. And the cool thing about it is, whenever you uh, transfer it, it'll ask if you want to smooth and go ahead and smooth it. And that way, whenever it hits this table, everything will look good whenever we look at our graph. Target air fuel ratio, we're good with the stock settings in here. We're going to idle at 13.8, cruise at 14.7, wide open throttle at 12.5. We've got two options. We've got this 2D table where we can make the edits down here, or we could go up to the simple table. And uh, the cool thing about it is, is we can use the simple table to kind of make life a little bit easier. So say if we want to lean out our idle a little bit, notice uh, that whenever we make changes to this, it actually makes changes to the 2D table also. So then we could switch back and leave it as is. So we'll go ahead and put this about 13.8, put it back to 2D. We've got it. It's made the adjustments. Acceleration enrichment, temperature enrichment, startup enrichment, all of these values for now, we're going to leave them as Holly put them in there. We'll touch on these later on as needed. Uh, specifically, cranking fuel might be one that we have to make some adjustments to. But for now, we're just going to leave them as is. We're building that kind of wizard style base file for first start. Fuel control is just DFCO. We don't want that on right now. Later on, we'll turn that on. So moving on from that, we can look at our sensors, make sure everything's set up here. We are using the internal one bar. If you're going to be running something else, I suggest getting the software and using this as a reference because you can see the actual part numbers for the different GM or Holly uh, sensors. And you can always do a custom bar and set it up. Uh, but I suggest, as I said, sticking with a known entity such as one of these, and we'll go back to our internal one bar. Same thing, coolant temp, we're not running the Holly, we're running a GM. Manifold air temp, GM, select those over, and we don't have oil and fuel pressure into this right now. Those will be added later on. So next, but let's move on to idle. We want to go ahead and disable idle spark for the initial startup. And that's because we're going to command a set timing of about 15 degrees. We want 15 degrees to be locked in. That way we can use our timing light to verify that our distributor cam crank positions are dialed in properly for our setup. We may need to make some adjustments. And whenever we do that, we do that under our ignition parameters to this ignition reference angle here. So we'll leave the IAC idle spark disabled we are running the gm style uh iac p our uh, iac tps setup and so we have the stepper motor on there we'll leave the stepper in place all that set up and then basic default values for the rest of the stuff should be fine iac parked should be good there we can this is in this is a per percent i can't say that this is a percent of the idle position. So if you're having a hard time uh, getting this thing to 
uh, crank up because the IAC may be too closed or too open, uh, you can make adjustments. I would generally just do a wholesale adjustment up or down to this table. And that is it for idle. Now, Spark, one of our last ones that we got to look at, same ordeal here. We've got a 2D table. We have a simple table. I actually want my idle to be at 15. I'm going to go ahead and bump this up. Not 185. That would be bad. 15 degrees there. Cruise 36.6, a little bit aggressive for initial start. I'll bring that down to 32 and for wide open throttle, maybe 28. Just kind of ballparking it. We'll adjust these in better as we go. We just want to get this thing running. But as I said, made the changes on the simple. I'm going to flip back to the 2D table so I can edit individual rows. And what I actually want to see is up to about 1200 RPMs, I want a flat 15 degrees. I want that locked in because I'm going to be idling between 900 and 1200 uh RPMs and I want to make sure of what I'm commanding but if need be I could come in here also and we can grab I say we can we can grab some stuff in here and we can do some smoothing a couple times so we'll smooth this maybe twice and that way we've got a nice transition up face time and graph just the 3d representation of what we made and then our cranking parameters we're looking at 15 degrees perfectly fine and then our crank to run basically says once we're above 400 rpms the ecu is considered the motor as operational it is running rev limiters uh you know we're going to be running a spark high only i'm going to go ahead and set this up to 7,000 because we can definitely run this motor we have options of fuel spark fuel and spark and then soft we're going to stick with high only. We don't care about a low rev limiter. And of course, we're not using a secondary rev limiter yet. Later on, this is basically your two-step. We can make that adjustment there. Skip over the rest of this stuff. We're not really concerned about this. Later on, we might look at timing versus air temp. This is important on something that might be boosted. Just pay attention. This goes out to 999. We obviously are not going to see 1,000 degrees on a manifold air temp. We can come down. Bring this down to 200. And it scales weird. Notice how our scaling is not linear. If we highlight all these, even though you can't tell it's highlighting, drag it across and make sure that white box moves. Then we can come in here and do fill rows and it will spread these out appropriately. And then we can grab our stuff and make adjustments as need be. So once we're 120 or 136 degrees, we want to pull a degree, so forth. We can make these adjustments. This is great for boosted applications to make sure that we're not running too much timing whenever things get hot. And so, other than that, we can look at our I.O. Uh, this is where uh, the custom I.O. is configured. We're not doing any of that right now. We can also look at our pin map. As you can see, we have AC kick. We're not actually using that. So we can do things like this. Just drag them out, unassign them. It'll give you a warning. We don't care. We don't want those outputs being uh, energized because they're not being used. And you'll notice there's some stuff mix, missing up here. If need be, we can always go up to the toolbox and add individual configurations. So later on, if we say we add nitrous and we want nitrous control, we can add that and it'll pop it up there. But we don't need that right now. So we can go ahead and take nitrous back off. Same ordeal, pretty straightforward. Now we will go out and load this in using our sink and we will have to do a TPS auto learn. Drop down this arrow right here It'll give you the option to do a TPS auto set, ask you to open and close the throttle body a couple times. That way it can learn the voltages on that. And then you can watch your TPS in the corner to see that it is lining up. And that is it. We have just created, got to make sure and save. We have created our base configuration for the Smoke Monster Nova. Everything's nice and simple. We've done essentially the steps that the wizard does on the three and a half inch handheld through the software without requiring the three and a half inch handheld. And then later on, we're going to be shooting a lot of videos where we get more in depth with the tuning process, adjusting some of those auxiliary maps, things like that. So make sure and subscribe if you haven't. You don't want to miss out on some of that stuff. If you got any questions, hit up the comments down below. I know I went fast. This is something that you can get bogged down too easily looking at all these auxiliary tables. A lot of these default values that are in there are going to work perfectly fine, so don't get too hung up on them. Holly has done a decent job of populating good data for different platforms and providing us with a lot of base cows to build off of, so kudos to them on that. Uh, you guys... Know that you can always go over to GoatRopeGarage.com. we got the Patreon over there. If you need tuning assistance, check out our merch. Uh, you know, all that goes to help uh, do these videos, do these modifications, things like that. Uh, hit up the comments, subscribe, all that fun jazz. I'm getting out of here. You guys know the drill. Thanks for stopping by the uh, office, I guess. And ABT, always be tuning.